copyrighted program created by the Rio Grande Oil Company. Los Angeles Police calling all cars, attention all cars, broadcast 112. Be on the lookout for a burglar operating in the 77th Street District. This man leaves burned matches at the scene of his burglary. That's all. Rolls and clicks. Yeah. 
Holly, dead. Next morning, Detective Jones explains the situation to his superior. He heard his gun there only all the time, see? When he started to shake me down and got hold of the watch chain, I knew if he pulled it out and saw my badge on one end of it, well, he'd let me have it. I took a long chance and shoved his gun away as I drew mine from my shoulder holster. It was either me or him. You're quite right, Jones. You did the only thing you could do under the circumstances. Yes, sir. As a matter of fact, he was wanted. You've got an identification on him? Yes, I have. His name's Nelson. Wanted for hold up. Got a record that started with reform school when he was 15 years old. He'd done two stretches in Folsom by the time he was 25. Kind of funny with an old man. He went about the thing and get the business right away. I wouldn't be the least bit surprised if you had inadvertently caught the match burglar. The match burglar? But the man on me, who's he? Well, we've been having a devil of a time with him out in the 77th Street Division. He burglarizes home during the evening when people are apt to be out to the movies. He never uses a flashlight. He uses these big kitchen matches instead. He's a whole pile of burn ones after every job. Well, he seems a guy I shot. I feel better about it. Well, you don't have to have any pangs of conscience. He was a bad one anyway. Sure, Captain, but you know how it is. You don't kill a man every day, and it makes you feel funny. Well, makes you feel any better. I had a talk with the guy's mother this morning. A nice old lady, respectable and law-abiding. She admitted to me that perhaps it was a good thing her son was dead, because he'd never given her a moment's peace of mind. Uh, he's been in trouble ever since he was able to walk. I guess he was just a bad one. But the captain hoped that Nelson, the hold-up man with the match burglar, is a vain one. For the mysterious match burglar continues his depredations in the 77th Street Division. As night after night, and as many as a half a dozen homes are burglarized and the lost property mounts in value to thousands and thousands of dollars, the citizens of the neighborhood clamor for immediate action. Captain Wallace, in charge of Detective 77th Street, has Detective Jones and his partner, Detective D.R. Patton, transferred from Central to his command. On a day in April, the two men report the duty in the captain's office. Boys? I'm short-handed out here, and I'd ask to have you transferred to one particular job. The first tipper, a match burglar. We thought, Jones, that we had him, and you had your run-in with that bird note. But we were wrong. This monkey's pulled 20 jobs in, friend. Oh, how's he work, Cap? Well, we know mighty little about him. Except that he burns matches instead of using a flashlight. What's he steal? Mm. And he thinks he chains out of a kid's bank with sterling silver. He's not particular. He takes anything he gets his hands on. Oh, you got any idea who he is? No, Patton, I haven't. I never seen to leave print. The only distinguishing identification we have on him are these confounded matches he let us a place up with. Sounds like a tough nut to crack. It is. And I'm counting on you two to do the job. I hear the burglar report in more than 50 jobs. Look them over, boys, and see if you can get anything out of them. And you better work for his four to midnight shift. This bird pulls most of his six between seven and nine. Okay, sir. We'll go to work on him right away. And that night, as Jones and Patton pour over the burglar report in the precinct station, Mr. and Mrs. Casper Whitefeather are walking along 69th Street on their way home from the movie. As they approach their home... Well, I, for one, can understand why the wife in the picture left her home with that dancer fellow. He certainly knew how to make love, didn't he, Casper? Uh, yes, my dear. But when that old fool of a husband started stepping out with those actresses, <laughs> well, that was just disgusting, wasn't it, Casper? Well, uh, yes and no. I... What do you mean, yes and no? Well, there is such a thing as sauce for the goose and sauce for the gander. <laughs> Casper, you surprise me. Yes, my dear. Do you mean to say that you condone such conduct on the part of husbands? Why, if I thought for a minute that no, you... No, 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 Myrtle, 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 don't get excited. Remember, your complaint, you, you mustn't aggravate it. You men are horrible. You have such simple minds. Uh, yes, my dear. Here, I'll open the door. Just a minute, my dear, I'll turn on the light. Now, here we are, my dear. Back home. 
And a fine home it is with a husband who goes out with actresses. Now, Myrtle, I never said that. Well, I... he's not to, so that's just as bad. Myrtle, I never said that either. <laughs> what? Uh, look, the dead. Oh, what's the matter? Oh, somebody's been in. Oh, merciful heaven. Oh, he's still in the lounge he gave me this evening. It's gone. And so's the silver from the sideboard. Oh, call the police, Captain. Yes, 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 my dear, at once. Um, uh, well, what's the number, dear? Oh, how did I know it? I don't know any policemen, even if you do know after that. Oh, Merkel, there's such a time as this, it isn't. Well, there are dead operators. I know somebody. This yes. bedroom is fine. Oh, I, yes. They jumped all the doors on the bed. Oh, oh hi, Captain. Hi, Captain. They might still be here. Hiding in the closet or something. Hurry! Oh, yes, yes, yes. Uh, hello, operator. Uh, look, something terrible happened. Burglar, get, uh, get the police department. This is an emergency department. Certainly, certainly, Steve. Go on, speaking. Yes? Yes. Yes, sir, we'll be right over. Come on, Pat, we're going to see some action. Yeah, what is it? Burglary. <laughs> Five minutes, the two detectives pulled their police car to a squeaking stop in front of the White Feather residence and entered the house. Hey, I'm here, officer. You said they got in through the window in here. Hmm, you find any burned masses around the place? Why, why yes. Why? I thought so. Well, I don't see what they're doing. Really? Here's a chance to study our man's motor's off the land. You're a fair All right. Now, tell me, ma'am, have you disturbed anything? Oh, heavens, no. It is just the way we found it when we came in. I... Why, I'm afraid the burglars are still in the house somewhere. Little you know, they danger might... that. Little danger of that. Well, maybe they're lurking in the backyard. Oh, I wish you'd make sure. Well, okay, ma'am, if it'll make you feel any better. Hey, take a look out back, will you? Yeah, sure. Now, let's go out this window, the same way our friend came in. Oh, hmm, look at that. Are you on this window, ma'am? Why, of course. Uh, merciful days. You don't suppose he stole that, too? <laughs> no, I don't think so. I guess I'll find it around back here somewhere. Oh, Joe. Yes? Here's how he forced open the window. Looks like a half inch jimmy. They're pretty used, all right. Well, you'd better get a look out back while I check the extent of the damage in here. Okay. Well, ma'am, can you make a list of the missing articles? Well, I don't know. It's going to take some time to check up on things. And, well, I'm so upset and everything. Please, I just... What's all the fun? What's the police car doing outside the house? We've been robbed, Henry. Robbed? Hey, you have at that. <laughs> hey, that fellow didn't fool, did he? <laughs> this room looks like a candy sack wrong to me. No laughing matter, Henry Watson. No. If you come home. No, 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 my dear. Don't get yourself upset. Oh, no, I'm sure it isn't any laughing matter. <laughs> Only you've got to admit that this place looks sort of funny. I don't see anything funny about it. You know, uh, oh, well, <clears throat> Casper, I was just on my way back to the movies, and I wondered what was the matter. That was all. Well, I got to get off, you know. The missus is waiting outside me. Come on. Who's that man? Our next door neighbor. Well, I found this room, ma'am. Where? Out at the back of the lot. Well, my... Probably mind. carried it back there to get a look up and down the alley to see if he was safe. Yeah, I guess so. Well, you got many places in here? Well, apparently the bird dumps all the drawers on the bed and takes what he likes. This is white better. Can't tell how much has been taken yet. Oh, I suppose you could give us the list by morning, ma'am. Uh, yes, I'll talk to you. In the meantime, we better get the fingerprint man out here. Although I can't find any traces of prints. Can you, Joan? Not a one. It certainly looks like a professional job. Oh, just look at those burn matches on my clean floor. I don't pick them up with a drown in the carpet. Oh, well, what is it, ma'am? Right here, under the bed. It's a white feather. It's gone. It's gone under the bed? Oh, I get it. Our burglar is an ex-convict. How do you know? Simple. You keep the gun in one of the drawers, I suppose. Why, yes. In the top drawer in the dresser. So our friend finds it when he empties the drawer and immediately throws it under the bed out of reach. What? But why? Now, I should imagine he'd want to use it, maybe. You know. No, no, he was smart. He'd been caught armed while on the commission of a felony. He'd have five more years automatically tacked on to his sentence. Oh, uh, officer, I was just talking to the man who lived across the street, and he told me that about half an hour ago, someone rang his bell. And when he answered the door, he saw a man walking away from the house in a big hurry. Oh, so that's his gag, huh? He rings the bell first to be sure.
sure there's no one at home. If he gets an answer, he scrams. And if he doesn't, he crashes in. Well, simple enough, isn't it? Yeah, simple enough, all right. But it isn't going to be simple to catch this guy. Why, what's the matter? Well, so far as I can see, he just doesn't leave any clues. No fingerprints. Nothing but these confounded masses. Oh, God. Thanks, sir. Henry, what is it? I want to see those officers. Uh, Roger, here, come in. Oh, hold it. Oh, thank heaven you haven't left yet. Oh, what's the matter? Well, when you get in here, I want you to come over to my house. Why? I've been robbed, too. <laughs> the notes and information gleaned from the two burglaries they had investigated, the two detectives sat down the next day to catch their criminal on paper. Well, sir, it looks to me as though this bird works uh, in a neighborhood where you can find three or four houses in a group at a corner, and where there is an alley running behind him so he can make his getaway. Oh, that's right. Now I know that he's an old hand at the racket and probably an next time by the way he handled that gun. And the fact that he left no fingerprints. Well, we know that he uses matches instead of a flashlight. That's about all we do know. I'm not so sure about that. These uh, robbery reports tell a lot. Oh, what? Well, they boil down to this. Our matchmaker operates in the territory between Maine and Avalon and from 95th Street to 65th Street. He seems to start from the southern end of this area and works in a northeasterly direction. Yeah. Most of these jobs are pulled between 7.30 and 9 o'clock in the evening while people are out to the movies. Right. And look at these reports. That guy sure knocks them over here. Yeah. Look at this one last Tuesday. Five jobs in an hour between Maine and 89th and Avalon and 67. Hmm. Yeah, he's a smart hombre, all right. Yeah. But I've got a plan and I think he'll stop him. Now look. Here's a map of the district. And this circle I'm drawing roughly encloses the territory where our map burglar works. Yeah. We locate ourselves in a private house somewhere in the center of this territory. We'll have the radio cars notify as many people as they can to call in here as soon as they discover their houses have been burglarized. Then we'll have Pep Wallace relay the call to the house where we'll be waiting. As soon as we learn the location of the first job, We'll be able to guess approximately the location of the next house you'll take. Well, sounds reasonable. We'll give the boys in the cars a couple of days to put all the residents wise, and then you and I get in the old clothes and go to work. Oh, well, whose house will we take out in? Leave that to Captain Wallace. He knows everybody out in this neck of the woods. He'll find us a spot. <laughs> to pick in time to impress upon over 500 residents in the district the importance of reporting burglaries immediately, Jones and Patton carefully plan their strategy. Finally, clad in old clothes, they approach the house which Scott and Wallace has arranged for them to wait until the time is right for them to spring their time. Oh, that's the fifth time I've rung this bell. You sure this is the right place? This is the address of Sibber, gave me. Oh, it sounds like they're coming now. Somebody just cheered through those curtains at it. Yeah. Yeah. I want to get the old curtains at the door. Did you hear that? <laughs> yeah. I don't know why I wake up there, but we aren't careful. Hey, 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 not Bergley. They're police officers. Captain Wallace said it. Captain Wallace said it. That's the place from the I've seen some police officers wearing fancy uniforms. How is the person to know? Well, he wouldn't catch many crooks if he stayed in uniform all the time. Oh, then you must be in disguise. Right. But take a look at this badge just to assure yourself that we're on the level. Oh, sure, sure. I have to be sure. Come on in, come on in. Hey. Right. No, no, no. Sit down, sit down. Lena! Oh, Lena! Yeah. Uh, bring some of those pink knuckles with a nice piece for the gentleman. Well, Mr. Hepple, that isn't necessary. Oh, yeah, but for them to put Wallace, nothing is too good. <laughs> well, that's uh, very kind of you, sir, but we may have to be leaving in a minute. We're just accepting your kind hospitality until we receive a call from the captain. Yeah, yeah, so first told me. There's something about this burglar, he said. That's right. Ah, that fellow, that burglar is a bad one. Last week, he robbed my neighbor's wife of a beautiful fur coat. Night before last, he emptied the child's tank across the street. Tonight, maybe he comes to burglarize my house. 
Then I fooled him, man. Yeah. The two policemen got him. Well, he certainly get a hot reception if he tried to break in this place. He isn't likely to do that with all the lights on. Probably the captain already. I am to it. Hello? Yeah, but they are here. We are 60 minutes after what you talk to us. Oh, I'm a police officer. 
My name's Eric Jones. I'm a detective at the 77th Street Station. Oh, look here. Here's my gun. I don't want to use it on this guy. I could either shoot him in the corner and knock him out with a butt. But I don't want to take him that way. I don't want to hurt him, see? Here. I'll shoot it across the pavement for you. Now you call the police car and keep the gun until they come. Until they come. Well, looks like a police car. It is. It is. <laughs> you must be all right. You wouldn't give me your gun to hold. Oh, I'm not kidding you. I'm everything I say I am. And I'm going to sit on this guy with his arm lock on him until somebody comes along and gives me a kiss. Well, okay, mister. You got me some You won't have long to wait. I'll go and call the radio car right away. <laughs> Jones receives his reinforcement and securely manacles the Mexican suspect who is taken into headquarters where he is immediately questioned by Captain Wallace, Jones, and Pat. What do you mean? Jose Gomez. Where do you live? Over in Los Alamitos. I tell you, been operating over in this territory. Well, what do you mean, operating? What do you mean, operating? Pulling on these burglaries? I do not do no burglaries. Listen. We've been looking for you for months. How you know you've been looking for me? Well, we've been looking for a man who's been burglarizing the houses in this division. A man who's been using matches instead of a flashlight. We find you leaving a house on 77th Street with one pocket full of matches and the other pocket full of small change. The house you were leaving on 77th Street was burglarized tonight. Burglarized tonight. The police got the contents of the child's bank. We find your pocket stuffed with pennies, dimes, and nickels. Next door, you know you're the man we've been looking for. I never did nothing wrong. Well, let me put it this way. We were apprehended by an officer. They resisted him and attempted to escape from him. And his arm. They're lucky you're alive. So Detective Jones here is one of the best shots in the department. Oh? Hmm? Yeah. By the way, Jones, why didn't you use your gun on this fellow? You know, you had every right to. Well, Cap, I didn't see it ever since I killed that guy last month. You killed a man last month? You sure did. Mm-hmm. Yet at the same time, you saved your life. You don't know how lucky you are. And still, you don't seem to want to be a good guy about it. Well, a couple of times. Now, how about it? Let's hear your story. Oh, all right, Captain. This fellow here no shoot me. I think he was. <laughs> Good joke, Commissioner. Yes, yes, well. <laughs> All right, Gomez, bad talking. I am the fellow you are looking for, Captain. I did all those jobs. Uh, I am plenty smart Mexican fellow. I make lots of dinero robbing houses. I tell you all the places that I can. <laughs> Gomez talked for hours, boasting of his cunning to the characteristic braggadocio of the criminal. In the end, Detective Emmett Jones was able to clear up 75 burglaries committed by this one individual. When he was brought to trial, Gomez pled guilty to five counts of burglary, but based his plea upon insanity. As a result, he was sent to the Mendocino State Hospital for the insane. This story might have had an unhappy ending had Jones not been able to handle the suspect after he had overpowered him. And if this had occurred, the blame would have been squarely with those citizens who refused to give him aid. It is your privilege, your obligation, and your duty to assist your police officers whenever necessary. A citizen failing to do so is not worthy of the right to be called citizen. Thank you, Chief Davis. Ladies and gentlemen, police departments are more efficient today than ever before. It is almost impossible for a criminal to get away with it, especially if he tried to make a getaway in an automobile. 
More police cars are powered with Rio Grande Crest gasoline than any other brand, and these police cars have the greatest speed and power in history. Cities like Oakland, Los Angeles, Berkeley, and many other cities and counties are specifying Rio Grande Crest gasoline for all their emergency equipment. For fire engines, ambulances, motorcycles, as well as police cars. Official tests have proved beyond question that the patented Rio Grande cracking process produces the most powerful, the liveliest, and the most efficient gasoline on this market. Your neighborhood independent dealer sells you the same Rio Grande cracked gasoline these police emergency cars use. <laughs> Get this month's copy of the free calling all cars new. Any Rio Grande gasoline dealer will give you one. You don't have to buy either Crack gasoline or Rio Grande's new G gas. Just walk or drive into your neighborhood Rio Grande station and get your free copy of this unique publication with its fascinating true detective stories and latest movie and radio news. This is your narrator, Frederick Lindsay.